Hello, Arts 173. Uh, we're going to take a look at how to set up your web page to print on a regular laser printer or inkjet printer, which, believe it or not, you're going to want to do a little bit more than just press Command P or Control P on a PC. You want to kind of set this up so that it's um, formatted more sensibly for a for a um, printer. So. Basically, all you have to do is create a new style sheet, and it's going to apply to print. We're going to create a new style sheet for a new kind of media for the first time. And um, and then you just have to learn a few new CSS properties. It's basically the same thing, and um, but just a couple, sort of a new way to do it and a couple new ideas in there. So <clears throat> um, this is our basic web page, and we're just going to make this print. It has actually two CSS files linked to it, and that is just a red herring. Don't let that throw you. It's no big deal at all. So um, it's the first time we've seen it in a demo, but um, it just means that there's more CSS properties in this one. So you might see this sometimes with um, bigger websites, and there's reasons to like apply certain styles, uh, style sets to some pages and not to others. But <clears throat> it's no big deal. Um, Let's just, what we want to do is we just want to start with a duplicate of the regular CSS file. And let's just create a new file by clicking File, Save As. I've got my screen.css selected. That's basically all my CSS here. So let's do a Save As. And I'm going to save this as print.css. And let's link them. I gotta go back to index here. That's the original web page and I want to add a link to one of these files. You can see them right here in the head. Okay, so to create the CSS I'm just gonna link that file that I just made. Attach existing file in the CSS designer panel. I'll just add that source and it's probably obvious now that I've said it or you've already figured this out. So I'm going to go to print web page and open print.css as my link and under conditional usage I'm going to change the media to print and click OK. And you'll see a slightly different, almost the exact same thing as the other two links but just at the end there's one extra parameter on that link tag that says media equals print so now I've got another linked file and I don't actually need to have this open these are both going to be the same file if I click on this tab or if I click on this linked file right here so this can now be closed and I'll just have the index.html open and now's a good time to save all so in order to do this right, you just are going to restyle a couple of things to handle the ins and outs of a printed page. Um, I'm just going to show it in code view to make this nice and quick. Uh, it can still be added with the dialogues if you want to. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide a few things that don't make sense on paper and I'm just going to check on how these are being identified here. So the first thing I want to hide is the opening logo. Probably doesn't need to be there and this menu bar definitely doesn't need to be there so those are in a div class called header that's the logo and then a div class called menu that's the um, oops that's the navigation here I'm gonna go to my print CSS and under the header rule I'm gonna replace that with display none and I could actually I'm gonna copy and paste this there was header and there was menu. Um, I'll, I might keep the footer in there, but I'm going to maybe do some hocus pocus with it. But where's that menu? There it is. I'm going to take the menu out and say display none. And if you wanted to be slick, you could actually delete this and just make this dot menu, dot header, comma, dot menu and target them both at the same time. So, this doesn't even really need to change, although it doesn't really need to be there either. 
Um, you could delete it or you could just leave it there. You don't have to change this to display none. It will inherit the display none property and it will vanish. Now in order to test this, just to test my first little thing here, I'm going to preview it in Google Chrome and I'm going to save whatever needs to be saved. Actually the browser doesn't really matter too much. This should work just fine in any browser and I'll just press command P and take a look at the preview. So I should see the navigation bar and the opening logo gone and it just should start here so that's that's good. Alright so let's go back to Dreamweaver and I'm going to go to that print CSS file again. My wrapper I'm going to delete everything on there and I'm just going to say display colon block just to put something in there. This is actually at block by default as we've learned divs are a block so this isn't changing anything I'm just kind of like making sure the browser knows that that's a rule and I don't want it getting overridden with the it, it will inherit the screen.css rule if I don't tell it something so I'm just gonna say display block but I don't want it to say to have a background color to have a, a width and I you, you don't want the width defined on the um, on the print you we're gonna do it a different way um, you don't want that border there because that's just stupid and you the margin again we're gonna do it a different way so we got to give it something to override those commands so I'm just gonna try display block and we'll see how that goes and let's go back here you have to refresh this even though nothing's going to change and we'll press command P I'll blast it all I was hoping that would take care of it okay so let's go back and just manually delete the border that's okay alright so we'll say border um, zero pixels solid and we'll give it a color that's completely transparent that's kind of a hack I'm not quite sure why that's doing that to be brutally honest with you but I'm just gonna do this hack here and that should do it that should take care of the our little dilemma press command P now it should be gone it's gone alright cool so now there's just a, a little bit more on the bottom here that also doesn't make sense you can see there's a few clickable links on the bottom but I think it's sensible to leave this this copy right in there so I'm gonna try let's see how this goes I'm gonna go back to my CSS again and there's um, a footer that I noticed there's should be right here okay there it is and for the link visited hover active all this stuff I'm just gonna say display colon none that's uh, this the first part of this is kinda just taking stuff out other stuff that makes sense to take out is things like video audio um, it might sound kinda strange but um, on your um, embed links you can change the display to none uh, your header your nav bar um, your footer maybe maybe not as you can see it the footer and I find is often ambiguous so it might make sense to leave it there so use your judgment so let's save this and flip it back to good old Dreamweaver remember to refresh every time you do this even though again nothing changes just re you have to refresh it so that it refreshes that CSS file and there's what I was hoping to see so um, I've just got copyright on the bottom and it's centered and we're cool so awesome okay so um, now it starts to get quasi interesting um, depending on your viewpoint but one of the things we might want to do is hide all images by default I might want to say let me check on my what tags are defined here I want to see if there's an IMG already defined nope there's not so um, I should organize these but I'm not going to right now so if I wanted to just get rid of all images I could just make the IMG tag display none and that might be what they want or it might not I don't know so 
depending on the client. So if I press, oops, I either didn't save it or didn't refresh it. I saved it. I think I just, there we go. Refresh it and press Command P. Okay, so that hides all images, no matter what. You know, or I could target specific images and hide them, as we did. And you might want the images to display. Maybe it makes sense because the diagrams are important. So, um, or maybe it's just something that matters for one reason or another. Um, you might want to set a maximum size so that they don't bleed off the paper just in case. You can do that with a max width of 99%. Another thing that you might want to do is if you have links that are um, external links, they can be very long sometimes. So that will break a print layout. And But if you want to, you just say PA. So we're just talking about like inline links open curly brace, close curly brace, any inline link that's in a body copy type of situation, then we can give it a property called word wrap and we can give it break hyphen word so that it won't just freak out if there's like this gigantic three line link. That can happen sometimes. So there's also some format styles that we can put for like actually starting to format the page. I'm going to kind of put these at the top because they all start with at and I would have preferably started with this a little more organized but um, I'm going to leave that to you to sort out. So let's start with the first one at page. I'm going to give it a margin of you know, I've always felt like one inch margins are a little big, but I'll give it one inch. I think that's the right way to show that. I'm going to flip back to my browser and just check on that and see if that looks like it's got a margin. Okay, it's got a margin. Cool. All right. And as you can see in this scenario the the IMG tag the max width didn't do anything because this doesn't go all the way off the page but if if we had an image that did go all the way off the page this would deal with that okay so a couple other things we might want to do is set the uh, font sizes specifically for print and under body, I would probably, you, serif fonts are considered the, the easier font to read on paper. And I would probably just say, give it a 12 point font of some kind of serif. And you can use this if you want to, or let's try Georgia. And we'll fall back to Times New Roman, fall back to any times, fall back to any serif. So, and I'll give it an, a little extra line height. We'll give it a 1.3. And we give it a white background and black text color. Mostly your text color should be black, probably. So if there's a reason to do something different, then do it. But otherwise, most of your most of your text color should be black. Um, H1, we're going to give it a font size of an explicit point size, 24 point. H2, we're going to give that a font size that's explicit as well. We'll give it 16 point. And let's save that and flip back to the browser, refresh, command P. And we've got, we've got this now. So um, also be on the lookout for multi-column and fluid, absolutely positioned elements, static elements that work outside the flow of an HTML document. 
So you will, if you catch any of that, you will get in trouble if you don't restyle those for print. So that's about it uh, on a technical level. Um, this is kind of an assignment about using your judgment, so that's a little bit of your um, a little bit of your goal is to ask yourself what are the sensible choices for the scenario that you've got in front of you. So good luck and uh, have a good day.